Hi guys, Rose here with The Cackling Moon. This is going to be another tips video. So this is technically part two of my tips for reading in person. This is my video about my tips for reading online. Um, online readings has been something that I have been doing for a while now, since 2012, <laughs> late 2012. Um, <clears throat> and I have done, it's like, it's been trial and error. So I've been learning my way around what works for me, what didn't work for me, what I could improve on, what I needed to do less of. And I feel like it's been about seven years and I feel like I'm at that point where I could do a video on it and actually have some substance for you guys. So um, if you are looking to receive some guidance on how to do online tarot reading, this is the video for you. Okay, so first off, um, online tarot reading is totally possible, okay? I gotta say that first, is that it's totally possible. Some people are very skeptical about online readings because you are not face-to-face -face with the person. How do you know you're reading for them accurately? It's actually one of the best ways to trust your intuition because you're not getting the physical cues from the person based on their... Um, facial expressions, their emotional reactions. You're not getting any of that. So to be honest, if you're able to read accurately and you receive accurate positive feedback from your readings um, that you've done for people online, to me that shows validation that you are 100% reading from an intuitive standpoint versus just you know reading the definitions of the tarot card. Um, I feel like reading online is just as valid as reading in person, but everybody will have their, um, their preferences. So some people would prefer online. Some people prefer in person. I prefer online. Um, I think it gives me more freedom to, to play around with the services I offer and it minimizes my stress or my, um, my nervousness. <laughs> I also feel like reading online allows me to trust my intuition. Um, and it's almost like a test every single time I read for somebody. So those are like kind of like the main benefits of that. So let's get into it. Um, when you are reading online, whether this is free readings or you are taking payment for readings, um, it's really good to base a somewhat dialogue with that person, okay? Um, so there needs to be some sort of platform that you are utilizing to do these readings, okay? Let me see if I can put this up just a little bit. Sorry, guys. Um, some sort of platform that you are going to be basing these readings off of. Okay, hopefully that's good. <laughs> Um, when I was, when I was studying the tarot and I was offering free readings, I was utilizing the Tumblr, the Tumblr platform. So that's where I was doing a lot of my, my, um, free readings. So on the Tumblr platform, I would make a post and I would ask people to submit questions if they wanted a free reading. And, um, you know, and then I would answer their question after I pulled cards and sometimes I would submit a photo alongside like a two, three sentence um, interpretation of what I got for them for that reading. And then it, it started to kind of develop into more lengthy readings and I started to utilize email readings. So um, you can also jump into that. You can jump into, you you know, the person submits a question to you, you pull cards, you take a photo, you, you put, plug it into Microsoft Office, or if you use, like sometimes I would use Canva when I was making like really pretty templates for my readings, and you just type it all up, send it in an email, and that's their, that they get their email through reading. I mean, they're, they get their reading through email. Um, email readings are fun because you get to kind of have a physical form so you can print it out and keep it forever. Um, but they are very time consuming and lengthy if you are someone who likes to go in depth with your readings. So for me, I was finding that sometimes my readings could be pages and pages and pages and it was 
very time consuming to type it all up and trying to type up what I'm getting in my mind onto paper was not easy. So eventually, and I would say I, I was doing email readings for a couple years, eventually I kind of pulled away from that and I started to video record. So another option for um, online readings is video recording, which is what I'm doing right now. You guys see that all the time on my YouTube channel. And then the other options I've, I've seen or I've, I've, I've seen other readers do is audio recording. So they actually record their voice and you just listen to it as an audio, which is pretty cool too because um, you don't have to necessarily be watching. <laughs> you can just turn it on and listen while you're like exercising or you know, when you're going about your day, you don't really have to sit there and tune into a video. So some people do the audio recordings. Um, and then there's also the FaceTime session. So you can also FaceTime with people or Skype readings, you know, um, and it, which is pretty much like a face-to-face, -face, only you're just doing it through the computer. So they're not physically in front of you, but they are like electronically in front of you. <laughs> Um, so those are, those work too. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do a reading, um, online for a person and not necessarily have to be face to face. I think that, you know, online readings are just as valid. I feel like there is something magical about sitting with someone in person and having a reading done, but sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes we live miles and miles away from the person or, um, we don't have time in our schedule to go visit that reader, you know? So sometimes online readings are much more convenient. Um, okay, so reading online, um, depending on the platform that you choose, like the type of reading you, you, you choose to do, you need to make sure you have somewhat the proper tools. And you, and necess you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money. Please don't think that at all. <laughs> um, if you have access to your phone, a smartphone, Pretty much that's all you need. Um, so with the smart, Starla, <laughs> with, I have like this little tie thing on my shirt and she's like trying to get it. <laughs> um, so as long as you have a smartphone, you could pretty much do anything with a smartphone, except for I would say email readings, I would resort to having a laptop for that. Um, so yeah, laptops, smartphones, um, microphone if you're doing the audio so that it's clear the like you know your voice comes in clear it's not all muffled and stuff um and just a good working camera and whether you're using a separate camera or you're using the camera on your phone but really it's like if you have a smartphone that's all you need um so i'm going to kind of approach this more so from the video reading um, aspect because that's what I'm currently doing so for my video readings all I use is the smartphone I have um, the iPhone and so the iPhone to me is just as just as good as anything else um, I did however purchase um, for my smartphone the largest um, space on my phone <laughs> so if there is any t how Starla if there is any tips that I would give you, it is to make sure that you are, you have space on your phone if you're doing like a video recording or even the audio. Um, because I know sometimes like on my old iPhone, I didn't have a lot of space and so my videos could be no more than like 10 minutes and then I would start getting like that little message that would pop up saying I didn't have enough space and oh my God, it was annoying. So make sure that you have space on your phone to video record. Um, and so I ended up having to, you know, I paid for that. I purchased my iPhone with the maximum, like with the largest um, file space, which was the best thing I ever did because I do video readings. I upload them on YouTube from my phone. I take photos for my readings. Um, I'm constantly, like Cackley Moon is run constantly with my cell phone. So um, I, I used Cackling Moon funds to purchase those things that I needed. So make sure, you know, if you are doing, especially if you're, ow, okay, this cat is driving me crazy. <laughs> Luna or Starla, no. She's seriously, she's at that stage right now where she's just really bad. Okay, I'm like gonna try and not lose my patience. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not lose my patience. Um, it just really hurts when she like grabs onto your legs with her nails. It's like, oh my God, it fucking hurts. Okay. Um, 
so now see now I lost my train of thought um anyways okay so anyways having a phone that works with space will take off a lot of the stress from you know uploading those videos and stuff my next tip is make sure that your camera works properly on your iPhone or your cell phone, whatever phone you're using. Um, clean the little um, the little lenses for your camera so that it, they're clear, okay? Even before you even turn on the video recording, clean the lenses front and back for your camera, okay? Because day to day, you're on your phone, you're touching it with your hands, it's in your purse, it's wherever. It gets smudged. Your fingerprints are all over it. And I don't know if a lot of people realize it, but if you're video recording or if you are taking a photo, it it shows up on there. Like it's it looks murky, like it looks blurry and foggy and stuff. So um, <laughs> make sure you clean that off so that your your video is clear, okay? The other thing is make sure that you are speaking clearly in your videos, okay? Speak up if you have to. I have the tendency to... Um, I really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, I exert my voice and I try not to do that. Like I try, sometimes I try to like bring it down a notch and, and talk softly, <laughs> but I am just not a soft talker. Like I am a very, very pronounced person when I speak. So, um, speaking clearly is important because you don't want to be mumbling and you don't want your clients to be like, what did, what did she say? <laughs> So speak clearly, okay? Um, if you do have a low, soft voice, use a microphone, okay? Because that's gonna help you elevate your voice and your clients will be able to hear you clearly. Um, little things like blow your nose before you start your reading, especially if you know you're sick and you have mocos. Um, I don't know, I, get the ten I have a tendency where if I am talking for too long, I do start to develop like nose shit <laughs> I don't know how, what to call it but some days I do have a, um, asthma some days I do have allergies or some days you know if I am feeling a little bit sick or whatever so I do try to blow my nose and clear it all out before I start recording because there is nothing more annoying than having to blow your nose in the middle of a reading and I do my best not to do that but I have had to do that once or twice because it was just it was just impossible to get through it. <laughs> so little things like that. It's like common sense, okay? Um, so I guess that's like kind of like the technical part of it. Being connected to Wi-Fi when you're uploading to YouTube is easy. You got to be connected to Wi-Fi. It'll go much faster. Um, your your Wi-Fi connection, you know, your internet connection. I mean, if you are if you're using if you're reading you're doing readings professionally and you have the money, you know, you should be spending that money on making the things easier for you for your business, right? So when my husband and I were setting up our internet, I told him I need the fastest internet because I upload videos like crazy and I'm constantly uploading videos on YouTube from my phone for tarot readings for clients and then also for my YouTube channel and these videos are. 20 minutes, 30, 40, sometimes an hour in length. I mean, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> so um, having fast internet helps so much because when you're uploading to YouTube, it goes faster. So my upload time usually takes, for maybe like a 20 minute video, it usually takes maybe maybe five minutes, four minutes, I don't know. For, I, I uploaded a 60 minute video one time, it took about 20 minutes. So it, it just depends. It depends on your internet connection and how fast your speed is. I spend the money on it because it's for my business. So, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna cut corners around that. It's my business. Um, so that's another tip is, you know, put your money towards things like that. That'll make life so much easier for you. There's nothing more annoying than trying to upload a client video reading and it takes hours. <laughs> it shouldn't take hours. It, should, it shouldn't it should take hours. Um, so just that's, to me, that's like a good valid tip, I think. Um, when you're doing your video readings or even your email readings, when you're taking photos for your, your email readings and your or your video readings, have a nice setup, you know? Put the tablecloth down, have some crystals, a candle, make the 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 essence, the the room look like how you would want it to look if you had um, a client 
in front of you face to face. You still wanna make that experience just as exciting. Just because they're not sitting with you face to face doesn't mean that you that you don't, um, no, you stay there. <laughs> Just because they're not fit, sitting face to face doesn't mean that you go above and beyond for them. And I feel like I have like a piece of eyelash in my eye. Oh my God, this video is like, I'm sorry you guys, there's so many distractions. Um, so make your, make the setup look as, uh, as nice and as, you know, true to, true to the way that you would want your, your reading set up, like your, your space set up for an in-person client. It's, you, you got to give them the same experience, right? Um, if you're just taking photos for email readings, like when you, when you have a pretty picture for the client to look at, you got to keep in mind, they've probably never seen a tarot card before. Chances are, you know, sometimes you'll have clients who are tarot readers, but for me, it's like I always treat every client as they don't know what tarot is. So I try to, you know, make everything as visually appealing as possible and make everything look as magical and mystical as I can because I want them to have that experience and I want them to have a positive experience with their reading. Um, let me think. For online readings, you need to set time frames. Okay, how long is my session gonna be? How long? How much? Okay, when you're when you're figuring out the length of readings, the time, the time frame, versus how how much they cost. So for me, on average, my my um, I have lengths of times. So my mini sessions, all of my mini readings. 10 minutes tops, nothing more. My regular readings, if it's a one question, one to three question, um, it depends. The three question can go up to like 30 minutes or so. My one question, usually no more than 20 minutes. My spirit guide reading, usually no more than 20 minutes. Um, unless there's like a lot coming through, then the reading can go longer, but chances are on average, it's a 20 minute to 25 minute video. My layers of, <coughs> excuse me, my layers of you reading, um, my larger readings, 30 minutes plus. So um, I've had some layers of me readings come into being like 40 minutes. I mean, it just depends. Sometimes there's a lot that has to be said. And then sometimes there's not a lot to be said. And that's because, like I said, the client didn't ask a question they're closed off or the combo of the two, which is probably like the worst combo when they don't ask a question and then they're closed off. It's like, you're just trying to break a wall. <laughs> um, so it's, it's kind of like, well, you're gonna, you're, you, you provide what you can, but once it gets to the point where you're like pulling teeth, just end the reading or pull on something else. You know what I mean? And sometimes I've done that. Like I'll, I'll say, okay, well that's enough from this topic because it's like there's nothing else coming through. Let me pull on this and then I'll try to do that. And usually that helps. Um, so being, being set on how much you're charging for a service and how long the length of time is, especially if you're doing a video reading or audio. Because you don't want to have a client pay for a $60 reading and it's a 10 minute video. And then they're, the people who are paying for a mini reading like $20 and they still get a 10 minute video. It's like, it just doesn't make sense. So you gotta, you have to kind of make sure you, you, you figure that out prior. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. So, um, a lot of you guys were asking even for the in-person about taking money. Um, so any, for any readings, whether this is in person or this is um, online, you need to make sure you are prepared for that if you are taking money for your services. Um, I use, so in person readings, I used to do cash only. I used to. And then I had the experience where the client was late and they weren't late just like five minutes. They were late almost half an hour and my ass was waiting for them. And so that was a big learning experience. We all have learning experiences. Um, learn from your mistakes, you guys. So after that experience, I decided, you know what? Because the client didn't pay me until she got there. 
So it was like to her, her being late was no big deal because she didn't pay for the session yet. My ass was the one that was paying for it because I was waiting for her, you know? So I switched that up. So for my in-person, just real quick, since I didn't go through this in the other video, for my in-persons, um, I, I stopped doing cash only and I started asking my clients to pay prior to their session, okay? So they pay in full prior. We book your appointment in the time. And then I have it in my um, ethics page, I believe, where I talk about you know refunds and stuff. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. But basically, if you're late over 10 minutes, it's like you forfeit your service because I'm not gonna sit and wait half an hour, hour, whatever, for someone to show up. It's like if you're not being on time, you didn't either you didn't plan your commute properly or you just don't care, you know? I understand sometimes life happens, but you also have to understand you 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 have doctor's appointments set. You're usually not late for that, right? You have hair appointments, you have um eye doctor appointments, you have appointments, you have dates, you know? So it's just like your your tarot service is the same thing. So um, I was starting to be very strict with that because it's like, it's my personal time too. And it's also, if it runs into one of my other clients' appointments and I have to push them back because someone else was late, that's an issue and that's what happened. So I was like, no, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> so I stopped doing the whole pay me cash when you get here. It's more, no, you pay in full first and then you show up for your service. If you're over 10 minutes late and I don't hear from you, you're a no call, no show. And it's a case by case basis how refunds happen, you know? Now, if you do contact me and you're late and say, oh, I'm running late, I'm in traffic or whatever, and I'll be there in this amount of time, it's like, okay, if I can make it work, because sometimes I would do readings back to back in person because it's like, oh, I'm gonna be here. So yeah, sure, come over here and meet me and we'll do a reading. And if it gets to the point where you're gonna be pushing into another paying client's time, I wouldn't do it. So you have to really start setting your boundaries for that. And that could be touchy. That's that, that it gets touchy with in-person readings for that. Now, what I recommend is, is taking payment through PayPal. You could do the square, which I actually have that too. I have the little credit card swiper. <laughs> Um, I use that a lot for a festival that I read at, but I haven't really used it for in-person because all of my in-persons, they were willing to pay through PayPal or Venmo. So Venmo is the other form of payment I take. Um, and so you're going to have to set that up ahead of time. You know, the last thing you want to do is be like scrounging to figure out how are you going to pay me? <laughs> so you need to make sure that they are aware of how you take payment. Okay. Um, and so I use, I, I use PayPal and Venmo 100% most of the time. Um, and what else? I would say I would have, I mean, this is everyone's your own choice, but I would say take payment ahead of time for your services because it just, it makes that person, it, it holds them accountable to be there for you, to show up, especially in person. If you are doing online services, they should be paying first um, because you're providing a service to them. They pay, you provide the service, and then hopefully they'll give you a review after. Not everybody gives reviews. Now, if you receive reviews, this is another tip, is put them on your website, and you should have a website, okay? Some sort of a landing page <laughs> for all of your content and services. So people sometimes they'll email me, you know, a little blurb saying, thank you for my reading, blah, blah, blah. I always save those, put them in my website because that's gold. That is someone telling me that my service was amazing to them. And so other people who might be looking at my website will look at my testimonial page and be like, oh, okay, a lot of people enjoy this reader. So save your, your positive feedbacks, you know, um, and put them in a testimonial page on your website. <laughs> have a code of ethics page on your website as well so that you could direct new online clients to your website and say, check out the, the code of ethics page. Those are my like rules and what I do and don't do with readings. Send them to, you, you, it's just so easy to send them to one website where all of the information is there, okay? 
Now, not everybody's gonna read it. I don't know how many times I get asked questions where it's like, girl, read the website, you know? <laughs> People don't like to read, so it's on them, you know? Um, it's it, You have to be as clear as you can, but you can't babysit everybody. And that's another tip is like, you can't babysit your clients. You're gonna get returning clients who will know how you do things and you don't have to babysit. But if you're getting those new clients that come in, chances are you're gonna have to explain things a little bit. And if you're frequently getting new clients, which is amazing, it, but it can also be a little frustrating if no one's reading your website and you're just like, <laughs> cause you put in all that time for it, you know? So it's just easy for me to direct them, go to my website, there's my service page. If you have questions about the services, let me know, you know, but read my stuff, you know, read what I'm offering and read what I need you to do after the fact. So like on my services page, it'll list what I, what I offer, right? And I always list it in the service. After you make your purchase, within the comments or the notes section of your PayPal order, there's always a note, a place where you can leave a note. Please leave me like your first name, your email address, so I know where to send your reading to, and your questions, you know? But I don't, there's a lot of people who they don't see the note section in the PayPal order, or they forget, or they just don't know, they don't read it, so they don't realize that's what they're supposed to do. So I will go back and email those people. Hey, did you have a question for your reading? Um, and if I don't hear back from them, I, it's an automatic, I assume, you don't have a question, so I'm just gonna give you a general intuitive reading. Um, because to me, it's like, I can't babysit everybody. <laughs> so if you don't send me a question, I'm not gonna know if you need a question. You know what I mean? Um, and for the most part, everyone does, they get it right. You know, they do it the way they're supposed to, but there is every once in a while, there is a slip up. And there is a like times where maybe a client will say, oh, well, I really wanted to ask this question. Okay, well, after you send in your order, it's like if you didn't see anywhere to put the question, then they could have emailed me too. And if they don't, it's like, well, I don't know, girl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so it's just, it's frustrating. It's a little frustrating. So it's, it's kind of like be as clear as you can on your website and in your services what you need. Because people who have never done a reading or had a reading done before, they don't know. They're, they're not going to know what to do. So try not to be super confusing, but at the same time, be patient. <laughs> Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, okay. So after the reading is done, like after you do a reading and you send it out in email, sometimes you will get those follow-up questions from clients, right? And I always say in my videos, if you have questions, please send me an email, right? And usually I don't really get too many follow-ups. Usually it's, I get a lot of feedback. But every once in a while, I'll get someone who will follow up with a question or two. And I will take my time to answer their question or to clear up something of confusion maybe that they had with their reading. But if it turns into them wanting a full-blown second reading, you're going to have to pay for it. You know what I mean? So you got to set, learn to set boundaries and be comfortable with setting boundaries with people. Um, another tip I have is um, the length of time for turnaround, okay? So when you're doing online readings, you have a turnaround date versus in person, it's right there, they're getting the reading on their appointment time. Online, it's different. You're putting in your order and then you're waiting until that tarot reader does your service and they send it to you. Some readers will have a 24 hour turnaround some not everybody does though so you also have to keep in mind and these are two my people who are watching if you are ones that get readings maybe you had a tarot reader who did a 24-hour turnaround you can't expect every reader to do a 24-hour turnaround because that's just not reality some readers it's full-time job to do readings and they have all the time in the world to do it other readers like myself i also work a part-time job on the side. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and every other Saturday, I'm at my job. I don't do readings on those days. 
Um, and then you have other readers who are moms. They're moms, they're parents, they are, you know, they have other things going on. So they don't have the ability to turn around a reading in 24 hours, okay? So, but it's also up to us as readers to list it in our services page, the turnaround time frame. Mine, I believe, is still at 10 days, okay? So that's a week and some days, that's a week and some change, which has always been comfortable for me because if a client is putting in their order on a Monday, right? I, if, and chances are, if you just put in your order, let's say it's Monday night, I ain't doing your reading Monday night because I'm already done, I'm closed for business, right? And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday come and I ain't doing readings those three days because I'm commuting to work and I'm at work all day. So <clears throat> that client automatically, that's three days, they're not gonna see their reading, right? Then Friday comes around, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, those are the four days that I do readings Give or take, Saturday is usually not so much because of um, my job or when my husband's home to visit. So it's Friday, Sunday, Monday are my prime reading days. So that client, that's already like four or five days that they have to wait. So I do a 10 day turnaround to make it comfortable for me where if I can't get their reading done in, in time, it's like I'm not stressed, okay? So you have to d <clears throat> come up with a turnaround time frame that is comfortable for you, not convenient for your client, okay? That's the biggest advice. It has to be comfortable for you and not convenient for your client. Your clients are paying you for a service, but if you are not comfortable with providing it in a certain time frame or at a certain rate, you're gonna be all frazzled, you know? So anything for any, any kind of service that you're doing for your clients, it has to be comfortable with you first. Um, you, sometimes you'll get those clients who are pushy and they want their reading in a day and it's like, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it in a day. And if, and if they want it in a day, it's like, I'm not able to provide that service. So perhaps there's another reader better for you. Sometimes you have to do that, okay? Do not ever let a client pressure you into providing a service outside of your limitations, outside of your comfort zone, outside of your boundary points, outside of your schedule, okay? Um, even if you know them in person, it's just sometimes you have to set, put your foot down. <laughs> um, because it's, it's just like you're not, you're just not going to be happy, you know? And your mind isn't going to be in the right place. You're going to be annoyed. It's just, you just need to make sure that you always honor your rules, your boundaries, everything. And stick with it. Because if you're constantly like, well, usually I charge this much, but I'll give it to you for this much. That client might tell someone, hey, so-and-so was a really good reader. They gave me this reading at half the price, but they usually charge this much. But maybe they'll give it to you at half the price. Then you're going to get people who are referred by them and they're telling them how amazing you are. Great. But if you're not sticking your, with your guns, with your prices, those people are going to think they're going to get the discount too. So you have to be really careful with that, with like how you give discounts to people. Um, and your price range, you know, be, you have to honor it. And that's why I feel like doing flash sales or like a sale every once in a while is good idea because it gives those people the people who either have a strict budget or the people who live on sales it gives them a chance to have a taste of you at a bargain right and those are great but this brings me to my next tip is do not be the flash sale reader <laughs> i remember i was i was told that piece of advice um by another reader a while back, a long time ago, when I was like first starting out. And because I had asked this reader for some advice on pricing, and they gave me advice, but they also said, do not be the flash sale reader. People will, if you do flash sales every single week, every month, at all the time, people are gonna expect those sales and they won't purchase your services like your natural normal rates 
those those normal normal services are gonna be like oh well she's gonna do a flash sale like in, in another day or two so I'll just wait for that <laughs> and that's fine you know if there's people that wanted to to do that that's fine but you're only hurting yourself by being a constant flash sale person um, it's great to, to do a sale for people and help them out every once in a while it's great to do giveaways but if you're becoming known for your giveaway or you're becoming known for just your flash sales, you're only hurting your business um, because then you're, you're just being known for that. And um, I don't know. I, to me, it's just like a sale is something exciting, right? It's like, ooh, she's finally doing a sale. I'm going to jump on that because I never see her sales, you know? That's how it should be, at least in my opinion. I could be wrong. But tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but that's, that's, um, that's my opinion. So I do sales every once in a while. I'll do a flash sale every once in a while. But I don't do them periodically, like to the point where it's like every month on the dot I do one. Because I don't want to be known for a flash sale. I want to be known for my amazing services that I offer. And that, yeah, every once in a while, if you catch it, it's a lucky day for you, you know, to get a, serv a, a service at like half the price. Um, but at the same time, keep in mind, these readers that you were purchasing services from are using this. This is their source of income. This is the way they live. This is how they pay their bills. This is how they buy groceries. This is how they, whatever. So <laughs> I can't tell you how many times my cackling moon money paid for the groceries because my day job paycheck went to all of the bills. Like it happens a lot. So it's, it's nice when stuff like that pulls through, but it doesn't make me want to become flash sale queen because I take a lot of time and, and, and energy and pride in the services I do offer full price. Um, and so I was like, I work hard for that. I'm not going to just throw it all away to be a flash sale person. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say on that. My last tip is to be organized because we're already like 37 minutes in. My last tip is to be organized as a, as a reader online. So when you're doing, when you're getting readings online, you are most likely going to be making sales constantly, right? You want to have somewhere to put your, um, to put your orders. So really quick, cause I don't want to like show names and prices, but there you go. So if you have a little planner, I like to use planners, right? So each day of the week, I, if I get an order, let's say for today, I'll look for today's part in the planner. I'll put that, that client's name, how much they paid for, what service it is. And then when I'm done with their services, see how they're all highlighted? There's like the highlighted parts. When they're done with their service, when I, when I film their reading and I send it to them, once it's delivered, I highlight it and that tells me it's done. This helps me stay organized. I would die if I didn't have this. <laughs> This book, this little journal, it's just like a, a basic notepad. Um, this is where I keep my client appointments, like the information from their appointment. So I'm not gonna show because it's private, but as you can see, there's a lot of writing and highlight stuff. This I have only barely started to do a few months in. I haven't been doing this all the time. This is a new, this is like a little new test for me. And I find it's helping me a lot. Um, it keeps me organized. It helps me, me remember when I'm sitting down to film a reading. I seriously just turn to the page of that client. Oh, okay. This is the questions they ask for their reading and I have it in the book. So I usually have this open, opened up next to me on the desk when I'm doing the reading and I don't have to go fish through their emails and look for their questions. It's like as soon as the order comes in, that's why I like it when you guys add it in the note section of your order because when your order pops up on my phone, it's right there. And I literally take the book, right? I pencil you in, okay, Rose bought a spirit guide reading and this is Rose's question. And I write it in there so that I have it when I'm ready to film. It's the, it just takes away so much stress and frustration so that I could just literally sit down, film, get those readings out to you ASAP. So if you are doing online readings and you are a reader that you get lots of orders, I do recommend having, um, having a journal to write down their questions, their emails, any little tidbits about their session, notes you want to take, especially if they're a, um, a client that comes back, have that. And then also have a planner where you could keep track of all of your, um, your appointments and how much you made each month. 
because that helps for tax season too. <laughs> All right, you guys, this is a long video. Thank you guys for sitting in and watching. If you have any other additional questions, comments, concerns, please leave them below in the comment section and I would love to hear it. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Love you guys. Bye.